of hack code. In this video, we're diving deep into the fastlight lead code problem, Conning Bits. This problem is an excellent way to strengthen your understanding of bit manipulation and dynamic programming. We are here to break it down for you with the clear explanations and examples. Let's buckle up. So here, given an integer n, written an array answer of length n plus 1 such that for each i, so i lies in the integer range of 0 to n, answer of i is the number of ones in the binary representation of i. So basically, we need to uh, form, uh, we need to get the binary representation of a given number at the tithe position, and then we need to count the number of ones in this binary uh, binary representation. So let's see the examples here. So for n is equals to two, we having uh, the binary representation of zero to two. So here the number of ones at, uh, for uh, zero is zero, uh, and for one is one, for two is one. So that's the answer here in the output. Uh, so for example two, for we have n is equals to five, right? So we just have the binary representation here. So here the output is just like the based on the number of ones in that. So here obviously for zero it's zero, for one it's one. So for two it's one, for three it's two, and for four it's one, and for five it's two. So the constraints here are analyzed in the enclosure range of zero to ten to the power of five. So follow up is like it's very easy to come up with a solution which is runtime of n log n. Can you do it in a linear time or for and possibly in a single pass? And next is can you do it without using any built-in functions? Just like built-in pop count in C++. We're gonna look into both of this in our solution. So let's dive in. Approach one using the Python same build function. So this is straightforward approach. Python offers an elegant one-liner solution leveraging its powerful inbuilt functions. This method focuses on using the bin function to convert a number into its binary representation and then count the number of ones in the binary string. So the algorithm is like this. We just need to iterate to the each number from 0 to n. For each number, convert to its uh, put it to binary representation using the bin function and then uh, count the number of ones in the binary representation using the count method. So, uh, and then we store the count in a list and return it. So let's look into the code here. So uh, what we're doing here is essentially initializing the list to store the count of set bits for each number from zero to n. So this is a shortcut in Python to do that. So it's basically uh, initializes the list with all the elements set to zero to the length of n plus one. And then we're iterating from one to n plus one. Why one to n plus one? We already know that zero has only zero one set, right? So that's why we uh, iterate from one to n plus one. And then here, uh, we're just converting into the uh, integer into this binary representation, and then we're counting the number of ones in that using the count function. So, and then we're setting it in the result of i. So, uh, for each uh, position, we're storing it, and then at the end, we return this result. The time complexity. So here, time complexity is O of n log n, uh, so because while using the bin i of count one uh, for each number from one to n, we are performing the two operations here. We are basically converting i to its binary representation, then counting the number of ones in that representation. So the bin function essentially iterates to all the bits to construct the binary string. So the number of bits for a number is proportional to the log i to the base two, because uh, and number i can be the representation approximately in log i of base two bits. So therefore, for each number i, the operation is o of log i. Since we are doing this for each number from one to n, the total time complexity is o of n log n, where n is the input number and log n accounts with the bit length of the numbers. So the space complexity here, uh, the space complexity is o of n, since we store the count of ones for each number from zero to n. So approach two using dynamic programming. So before that, let's go over the hints which are provided in the question so that we will be getting this as a more idea on how we arrive at this approach. So here the hints they provided are, you should make use of what you have produced already. And hint two is divide the numbers in ranges like two to three, four to seven, and eight to 15 and so on, and try to generate a new range from the previous. So this is the main hint here. Or does the order even status of the number help you calculating the number of ones? So let's look into this. So here, the observation we get is the number of ones in a number's binary form is related to its halves and whether it's even or odd. So don't worry if you don't understand this, I will show the live example. I'm just giving you context here. Uh, so here we build our solution from bottom up. 
starting from the zero and uh, use the previously computed values to find the number of ones for the current number. So the algorithm uh, is like this. We, sh we first start with the result array filled with zeros and then we trade through 1 to n. So for each number, we calculate the number of ones based on the its half. So here we do the right shift by one. Right shift is essentially uh, half. So, and then we add one if it's odd. Uh, we, we do this check for odd or even using the bitwise and with one. Uh, so result is like, uh, we just return the populated array. So let's look at an example here. So for n is equal to five, we have all this binary representation for numbers from zero to five. So here we see the binary representation for zero is zero, for one is one, for two is one zero, and three is one one, and the four is one zero zero, five is one zero one. So it's just a uh, representation of what we have here. So zero is uh, all these uh, boxes have the numbers from zero to n, and these circles have the just the count of the ones in the binary representation. So here, the observation we get is. So for G, uh, for one, what we're doing is like, let's divide the one by two. And then that's essentially halving the number. So we get 0 0.5, we truncate 0 0.5, so we get zero. And then the number of ones for zero is zero. So the number of ones for one is one. So it's like, since like this odd number, we have it added only uh, one to this, uh, whatever have uh, for zero, and then we get this number of counts for, number of ones for uh, the binary representation of one, that is one here. So let's take the case of two. So for two, we have the number of ones is one. And then how did we arrive at this? So we have the two and then we get the one, right? Two by two is one basically. So the number of ones for one is one. So since it's an even number, we have it only uh, same copied here, like as is one to one. And then let's look into the typical example of three here again. So here three, just make in half of it, right? And then we get a, 1.5 which is wrong get to 1 so the 3 uh, for 3 the number of ones set in this is 2 right so but uh, how did we arrive at this we just added uh, 1 to whatever we have for 1 and then we got 2 basically 1 plus 1 is equals to 2 here so for 4 right we just have the number and then we get 2 this is same as whatever is uh, for 2 so basically uh, we get at the pattern where for the even numbers, it's same as the number of ones for its halving uh, for the number which is equal to half of it. And then for the odd numbers, it's just like plus one of the number which is half of it, right? Similarly for five, we uh, number of uh, one set is two, right? So how did we arrive at this? Let's like five by two, uh, it's 2.5 where we try it to two. And then here one plus one is two. Since this is an odd number, we just add a one. So similarly, let's take in case of uh, nine here. So for nine, we have number of one set is two. So how do we arrive at this? Nine by two is 4.5 and then we rank it to four. And then we have four here. Like we have only one for four and then one plus one is two, right? So here for 10, we make it half. So 10 by two is five. And then uh, we have this as is number, like for two, it's two. So I hope you got the context. And also here by clear observation, we can see that Oh, for all the even numbers, we have the least significant bit is zero. And for the odd numbers, the least significant bit is one. But the least, we call it LSP. Uh, so here we see for, uh, let's take any typical case here. Let's take uh, example of nine here. So it's an odd number, LSB is one. So for 10, it's an even number, LSB is zero. So yeah, it's just an observation that the odd number has LSB one and even number has LSB zero hope you got the context here let's go over the code so here uh, we just instance in the result array the same as previous one so we just looping from one to num or one to n uh, i just took the expanded form of it to just expand better so it could be one to n to fulfill the result array so here uh, for i in range one, one, two, n plus one, we added, you know, why we took one because like we don't want to take zero because for zero, it's always zero. So we had to fill it from one. So it's just like we're filling from one, we took from one. So this uh, range is into zero, uh, n. So we took one to n plus one. So here we use the previously calculated results for i by two and then add one if it's odd. How are we doing this? Because here we uh, calculating this of i is equal to this of i of uh, right shift one plus i and one. So let's understand i greater than greater than one here. So here this operation shifts the boundary representation of i 
one bit to the right effectively is dividing i by two and then truncating any fractional part of it. So that's why when we do for like uh, for the e odd number, if it is a three by two, then we get only one because we truncate the point five there. So what does i and one does? This operation performs a bitwise and between the i and one effectively extracting the least significant bit of i. So which determines whether it i is even or odd. So and then here res of i is equals to is of uh, i right shifted one plus i and one. So this expression calculates the number of set bits or ones in the binary representation of i by counting the set bits in half of its i. So basically by doing the i greater than greater than one, it's an basically a right shift which is divided by two, and then we are adding one if it is an odd number. That can be taken care by this one, right? Because for uh, even numbers, uh, we're doing the and here right so this is a bitwise and so we get only the L lsb part of it we just discussed like for even numbers it's always zero for odd numbers lsb is one so one and one is one and zero and one is zero so this takes care of adding one for odd numbers and then finally we return the result so why this is dynamic programming here the essence of dynamic programming lies in the solving complex problems by breaking down into step by step or like simpler sub problems and storing the results of sub problems to avoid redundant calculations. In this case, the algorithm exploits the relationship between the number of set bits in the number and the number formed by shifting its bandit representation uh, one bit to the right. So by storing the results of previous calculations in the result array, the algorithm avoids the recalculating the number of set bits for numbers that have already been processed, making it a form of a dynamic programming. So here the time complexity is O of n, where n is the input number, uh, this is because of the uh, algorithm iterates over each number from 0 to n and performs a constant time operations to calculate the number of set bits. So on the space space complexity, it's O of n here since we store the count of ones for each number from 0 to n. Demo and conclusion. So here I've got the code ready and then we just use the two methods to represent our two different approaches. Let's try submitting each of them. First, we're going to submit the inbuilt method. See here, we see that it's an acceptable solution. Let's submit the approach using the DP. So yeah, this also acts as a solution. So conclusion, the beauty of this problem lies in the simplicity and the clever use of Python's inbuilt functions and the dynamic programming principles. Whether you are preparing for interviews or just love solving problems, mastering these concepts will take your skills to the next level. Remember coding this journey, keep practicing and you will see the improvement day by day. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Hack Code. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more coding tutorials and problem solving tips. If you have any questions or suggestions for the future topics, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until next time, happy coding.